Messi. Oh, what a goal it is! I'm Gian from Pi League Central. Uh, thank you very much for having me on the Bola Bola show. Hello everyone and welcome again to another episode of the Bola Bola Show. It's me, Alvin here and together with me today is my buddy, Steven. So, Steven, how's things, man? Hey, Alvin, things are pretty okay. You know, another, we're just uh, going through another middle of another lockdown. Mm-hmm. And of course, you know, we have like, exciting times, you know, because you have uh, the World Cup coming here, you have the Euros coming up, you have the Copa America coming up. Yeah, so yeah, man, I mean, international football is really... Uh... <laughs> Up and, and yeah. up and running full steam ahead, man. So you know, I guess that's the that's the bright side of this particular lockdown, which we have plenty of football action to follow. And you know, let's obviously this episode is a bit of a mixture feeling, I suppose, compared to after Malaysia's um, somewhat Debacle. Uh, I don't know, no, some <laughs> unpleasant start to this uh, qualifying campaign, uh, following in the post uh, lockdown. Era, yeah. I mean, uh, I mean, I mean, I mean, what's what's your take? What's what's your take on that UAE result? Honestly, I didn't expect it, that result. I thought that uh, I, I mean, I did. I I did kind of felt that you know it was going to be pretty tough to compete against UAE because they mm-hmm. overall they are a very good team. Uh, but I also had a little bit of uh, hope that you know because it it's a, it's a pandemic time. Preparation hasn't been gone hasn't gone smoothly for so many teams. You know, everybody sort of like starting from more or less the same level, starting from scratch, trying to get things back in order. So I kind of felt that maybe we could have at least tried to get something out of this game. Maybe a draw was possible, but even if we did lose the game, I was expecting maybe a, you know a very tight result. Just didn't expect us to concede four goals and especially three goals in the last ten minutes. Uh, yeah, overall, I mean, that, that, yeah. I mean, overall, I know uh, it, it's overall. I have to say, although two particular names have been somewhat singled out by most <laughs> critics out there. So, 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 which two guys? Which uh, did and and do you think they have just been made, made scapegoats, or it's quite justified based on their performance? I wouldn't say. Okay, to me, honestly, mm. have to be honest, overall, the team, overall, you know, a lot of yeah. players played poorly on that day. Mm-hmm. A lot of players were played. Really. I think only yep. a handful, you know, maybe like Dion Cools, uh, for his circumstances, I think he did pretty good. Mm. And of course, Kobe Nong was, you know, I think he tried his best. He did okay. Yeah. And I think Shafiq Ahmad, when he came in, you know, he changed the tempo of the game, the momento of the uh, of the game for us. Yeah. Yeah. But I, 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 I think he had he had quite a good chance. Also, it just you know went yeah. wide. Yeah. yeah. But if you look at overall, you know, players like Sumare, Safawi, you know, quite a lot of guys, mm. you know, they were they weren't really at their best on that day, to be honest. So you know, at the end of the day, you, you win as a team, you lose as a team. But I just didn't quite agree on the fact that you know both Dipola and uh, Liri John mm-hmm. were in some ways uh, uh, being highlighted the most due to the fact they were naturalized football players. And on that basis of reason, you know, they were, you know, called out the most by most football critics. Um, I, I'm not too sure how these two guys actually, I mean, especially in Dipola's case, you know, uh, overall, I honestly speaking, you know, kind of surprised that his name was thrown into the mix uh, in the Malaysian national team setup. I know he is eligible for, for to, to, uh, to, to uh, get the Malaysian passport, but I just didn't understand, you know, what's the logic of behind his inclusion of the team, whether the coach had a say in it or what, I have no idea. Um, what, what, what about Dion Cools? Do you, do, do you think it's a, it's a decision uh, they rushed too, too soon and to throw him into the, the, the mixer for this game? Yeah, uh, yes and no. Why mm-hmm. I would say yes, because, you know, he just arrived. Yeah. I wasn't really expecting him to start in this game. I thought that maybe he would be much more better equipped to start for the next game against uh, Vietnam. Yeah. I mean, because he just arrived. And yeah, I think he only had like, what, 48 hours or something? Yeah, exactly. To get used to. So I didn't feel it was ideal situation for him. Because uh, he's, he's got the build, he's got the build that 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 uh, that that kind of um, you know relationship with the with the squad. You know, I I'm not sure how many of them he actually knew. Maybe before that, I'm not sure if they had a Zoom call to to introduce each <laughs> yeah, other. Yeah, I'm yeah. not I'm not sure what, what what happened behind the scenes there. You see, but 
to just put him into this uh, you know this 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 kind of game was to me i think it's too soon yeah mm-hmm. yeah and, uh, and 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 also as a make he played as a makeshift center back on top of that yeah right? yeah Yeah, because naturally and, he plays in right back. Yeah, that's his, exactly. I mean, that's his natural position. But for this game, I think he was pl- placed in the centre back. I think he did okay for that role. Not too mm-hmm. bad. I mean, not too bad. But uh, yeah, I, I somewhat think that uh, maybe, maybe rushing him too early for this game wasn't somewhat an ideal decision. But you know, overall, he didn't do poorly. He did okay for his for his uh, for his circumstances. Mm. But 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 the thing is with the Malaysian team, I think they self they really self destructed because goal difference is gonna go is gonna play a big part in this group now because the group yeah. is so, it's still very open right and, and and to just throw away that that especially the last two goals right in injury time deep in injury time you 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 can see the Malaysian players are just like you know their heads are down it's like I mean the, the professionalism has just is just gone out of the window it's like sometimes. You know, I, I'm not sure. Even like, you know, when we play in the Padang and all that, some days, you know, where you know the the or the opposition team keeps scoring, and one moment it's like, ah oh, man, you know, you just your shoulders are down, and you just let them just run past you, and and that's what happened. Mm-hmm. And 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 I'm not sure whether this this additional two goals, which now put us in minus two in terms of goal difference. I mean, if these two goals didn't enter, we probably we still be even. On, on on goal difference, but now we are minus two, and in uh, the des- I mean the basically the destiny is not in our own hands now. You know we yeah. got to we got to rely on other results also. You know to be favorable to us. You know, yeah, definitely. We have we have to we have to hope for some results from our, from our arch rivals. Yes, yes, our regional rivals. You know, we yes. have to hope some favor from them. Uh, which of course in this episode we got our friend Jian. Who featured in our podcast previously for Thai football when we talked about Thailand football? I think sometime last year to give us some from his perspective on the Thai national team because they it wasn't a good start for them. You know they were expected to win against Indonesia, who were winless <laughs> yeah. in this group throughout the campaign. But now you know it seems like Indonesia got their first point, and you know it sort of I think put a setback on their campaign as well. So we would like to get his perspective because bear in mind. We will be playing against them in the last group game in this qualifier, so yeah. it's it's going to be an in- and, and, interesting and, 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 qualifying campaign, I would say. Yeah, you know, and and you know, we 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 need to hope for a result from them against the UAE, and um, we need to beat beat them big time. <laughs> also, now thanks to our <laughs> inferior goal difference and all that, so you know, the 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 the, the definitely the spana has been thrown into the works now. You know, based on the last uh, the last. Last results that just happened here, and uh, Vietnam is also very much in the lead here. So they ain't going to be giving giving things up so easily. So yeah, yep. Uh, but you know, for me overall, I think um, the dream of qualifying for the Asian Cup in 2023 is still there. I think it's just we we just need to. It looks like we might need to take a longer route just to make it there, rather than you know. We, Topping this group so that we can earn an automatic bird now. I wish we could have. I wish we could do it, but uh, it doesn't look likely at the moment. But I still believe that you know, in the lo- uh, if we have to take the longer route, we should be able to make it there. Because if I were to say this, you know, the last camp, the last Asian Cup in 2019, we saw teams like Vietnam. Uh, I think Kyrgyzstan was there. Turkmenistan was there. Thailand, India were there. Yeah, it kind of made me feel mad that Malaysia isn't there. Mm. <laughs> I mean, we had 24 teams qualify, yet we couldn't be one of those 24 teams. You know, I, I truly believe that you know the players, coaches, everybody, fans, we don't like to make up for that missing moments in in 2023. Yeah, uh, fully agree with that. And um, the so so it's basically left with the two games, you know, the 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 the, the final two games. The Malaysian team has to really really step up. Yeah. Uh, against Thailand and then against the and, and then will be the big one against Vietnam. Mm-hmm. So <clears throat> Malaysia has to win those two games and uh, really solidify their position. You know, 
maybe those two wins might not even be enough to to you know get them into the next stage of the you know the world cup qualifiers of course that will be the bigger prize for me you know yeah, yeah, yeah. ultimately if they can do it because you must understand malaysia is still still in near with the running you see yeah, yeah. there are many times we as malaysian fans we have come to this point of time where we know okay we just we are just there to just complete the fixtures you know and finish off the group you know we are like too far ahead from 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 catching up with the with the leading pack We are still in there with a shot. Yeah. 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 Let, let's hope for the best. Yeah. Yep. But anyway, we like to end this segment. We'll be back after this with Jan to talk a little bit about the Thai national team. And of course, you know, what can we expect in the last game between Malaysia versus Thailand? Stay tuned. And welcome back again, everyone. And uh, today we have our good friend Jian from. Uh, I mean, he joined us before in one of our podcasts talking about Thailand football. And uh, today on the Bola Bola Show, we are honored to welcome Jian. So, Jian, how's things, man? Yeah, I mean, things are okay. I mean, Thailand results are not really okay, but everything else is pretty okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, great. thanks so much for having me. Yeah, no worries, man. What and maybe let our listeners know what have you been? Uh, what, what what are you up to today? Yeah, so right now I'm with Thai League Central, which is a, a website that me and three of my friends started uh, last year. Mm-hmm. And we've just been covering the Thai League uh, for the past season. And now we're working on covering the national team and trying to stay up to date on all of the action in the World Cup qualifiers. Mm-hmm. And, and, how do, and how do our listeners access that website? Is there a particular link? Uh, yeah, so our, our URL is just thaileaguecentral.com. Uh, of course, you can so find it's us Thai, League, as well. Thai League Central.com, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, right, right. And we're also on we're on Twitter, we're on Facebook, and we're on Instagram as well. So many places you can find us. Mm-hmm. Right, awesome. How uh, disappointed were you with Thailand's two all draw with Indonesia? You know, did did Thailand just blow a big opportunity here against an Indonesian team? You know, without a single point. You know, before that game in the group. Mm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that it's a very disappointing result. I think all Thai fans were expecting a win. Uh, we knew we needed two wins and a draw to, to go through, most likely. And when you look at the table, of course, Indonesia had no points before this. You'd think that this was the right place to get one of those wins. And we haven't. The reaction has been pretty negative, uh, unfortunately, uh, from the Thai fans, which is worrying for me for what's going to happen for the next two games. And I think that, to be honest, I- I'm a big fan of Nishino, but he got the squad selection completely wrong. And the team's actually completely wrong for this game. He he played two sort of older journeymen with no experience uh, at this level, and a barely fit Ekinit Banya, and it was a real problem uh, down our left hand side because of that decision, which is very strange. Uh, I felt like he was almost rotating for the UAE game. It felt like that. It's the only explanation I can think of for leaving out such established stars like Titi Pan, Superchok. We're all left out. And it's such a strange decision and a strange team to play. And I think the moment we saw that lineup come out, everyone was so confused. Like, okay, either he's a genius or he's gone insane because this lineup makes no sense. He played a center back pairing that had never played together before at this level. I think he's played four different pairings in the six games that we've had. And we always, every game we've looked defensively shaky. And it's something that he hasn't figured out since the start of this campaign. Uh, and it's quite sad because I thought we were pretty incredible for the first 10 minutes. You know, I mean, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I mean, you guys had a great football, goal, but... had a great goal as well, right? To start off the game. Yeah, we were pressing them so high. We were winning the ball back in their half. We, yeah. we They never got in our half. And then suddenly, one ball comes in and our center backs look completely lost. Like, you know, deer in headlights for the rest of the game. Every time <laughs> Indonesia got into our box, it was gonna, it was a goal. So it was just, it was, the, to see that collapse is so, it was so disappointing. And we had a... We had like a foreshadowing to this in the friendly because we had a two-goal lead against Tajikistan and we drew 2-2 in, in the previous friendly. So it's, it was just, you know, we, defense is a real problem for us. And when you combine that our defense is already weak traditionally and you add this constant rotation at the back and these strange team selections, you know, it's, it, it's really worrying for a Thai fan. Yeah, and, and and as what you just pointed out, I think it was pretty clear that first goal, you know, uh, the defense was totally dumbfounded. But do you think it's also a moment of brilliance from the Indonesian midfielder to actually send in that pass? 
Oh yeah, it was an incredible pass. But I mean, yeah. from my perspective, I'll always look at why was mm-hmm. Manuel Beer trying to play offside when mm-hmm. nobody else in the back line was trying to play offside. You know, he just yeah. steps up to try and catch him offside, but no one else was doing it. So mm-hmm. I was, yeah. I mean, the pass was great, but there's that angle to it. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Mm-hmm. And, and you know, in the it's pretty much a I don't know but we, whether to say it's a it's a very depleted Thai team because you know there's no China tape, there's no Tiraton and Terasil. Uh, well, what's your overall take on the squad players selected by Akira Dishino? I mean, do you felt that there was some glaring omission in this team or some players that he could have brought together in this campaign in the absence of these main players? Yeah. So I mean, the first thing that you have to know about this Thailand squad is that it's a 42-man squad, right? Which is, I think, it's it, that's crazy from my perspective because he he picked the 42-man, originally 47, I think, until some players dropped out due to injury, all three of the players you mentioned dropped out, and it became a, a 42-man squad. And then we thought he's going to narrow it down to 23 and then get on the plane to the UAE, but he decides he's going to bring all 42 to the UAE and select a different 23 for every game if he needs to. So he has everyone to pick from. And I think that was just a strange decision. It, it just makes squad management so much more difficult, more difficult than it needs to be. And it just, you know, and even with the 42-man squad, he somehow managed to leave out some players, which I thought should be in the squad. And he's left in some players who I don't think should be anywhere, you know, near the squad or some players who shouldn't, shouldn't be in the starting 11, which were the starting 11 against Indonesia. Um, so, you know, to take some examples, I'll go to left back. I think left back is the perfect example because it's where we lost Kiraton. Uh, so he has Sasalak, who is at Buriram right now. And he's just signed a deal to go to Jonbuk in Korea. So he's a, clearly a very talented player. And after Sasalak, we have many options. He has um, two young players, uh, Chat Mongkon from Chonburi and Watanakon from Tong, who had amazing seasons, first like full campaigns in T1. They were very good. And he has Surya Sigmui, who I think is 24, 25 now. And he captained Thailand U23 team in many big tournaments. But instead, he's picked Ernesto and Santapon, who are both in their early 30s and have never played a Thailand game at this level before, a senior international game before, or any international game before, actually. And Ernesto went straight to the starting 11, and he's become the scapegoat for the first defeat. And I feel really bad for Ernesto because I just can't explain like the squad selection. It's just very strange. And the squad management to bring such a big squad is, is equally you know, very strange. Um, as for the three players, of course, Chanatip, Tiotan, and Tirasin are they're incredible heroes for Thailand. And there's no doubt that we're weaker without them. But I think we need to show more faith in their replacements. It, at number 10, we had Tanawat, who is a young player at Leicester. He's been playing uh, you know, regularly for Leicester's U21 side in the Premier League 2. And he's been scoring goals for them. He scored a goal against United's U21. Uh, so he's a talented player. And Leicester, he's in him. He's made the bench of the Premier League squad over in Leicester. Sasalak, like I mentioned, has been scouted to, by Junbok, and he's going to sign for them. So there is a lot of potential, uh, a lot of young players who can step up. Of course, Super Chok, Super Nat, Ekanit, like we've seen. If we believe in them, they, they, they can become the next heroes for Thailand. But the problem with Thailand squad, and this is something that Chana Tip himself said, although I think he said this in, in the context of playing for Muang Tong. He said that basically um, Thai players look up to these, these older guys, the Chana Tips and the Tirasin. And instead of saying, if you're, let's say you're a young player in Jonathan's position, instead of saying, like, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go and I'm going to play really well, I'm going to replace him and I'm going to become the next player, I'm going to take his place. Instead, they say, okay, thank God Jonathan is here, he's going to save us. He'll make sure we win, he'll save us. And he said that if Thai players want to be, you know, reach the levels that they do in Europe or in Japan, the mentality has to be, I'm young, but I believe I can do as well as Jonathan if I get the chance. But instead, in the squad, the way sort of Thai culture is, the way the squad dynamics are, uh, it puts a lot of pressure on the older players and a lot of pressure on the elder those, those elder squad members to, to to be the difference. And when they're not here, you can really you know feel their presence is missing. Mm-hmm. So it's more of like a, a sort of like a seniority thing in between the Thai squad, where younger players tend to look up to the older guys rather than you know trying to prove that I can be better than them. Is that? Is yeah, that- exactly. Okay. Exactly, yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I know for the benefit of our listeners, can, can you explain why the, the, uh, the likes of China Tip and Tiraton and Terrasio didn't make it for this squad? Is it something to do with COVID-19, um, uh, what do you call it, uh, quarantine or something? Yeah, so Tiraton hasn't really been fit uh, 
for a while. He hasn't really played regularly this season. Even for BG, he was mostly a sub when he came back. He was a sub in Japan for Shimizu S Pulse. So he wasn't fit to, to join the squad. Um, for China Tip, he picked up an injury in training with Contador Sapporo just before the squad selection. So he couldn't make it. And Tiraton is the one that's the, the most glaring because Tiraton doesn't have any injury problems. He just chose to drop out of the squad. He just, he just dropped out because he didn't, didn't want to do the quarantine on the way back to Japan. He didn't want to miss so many games for Yokohama and be away from his family for so long. And he got a pretty negative reaction from a lot of Thai fans initially. And he he even, I think, he, he lashed out back at some on social media. Uh, and I, I think he it's cooled down now. But Thai fans were pretty disappointed to see that Siraton, when he was the captain in some of the previous games, and he's a player that Nishino really trusts to sort of turn his back on the national team. People were quite upset with that. But I think now, you know, it, what's, what's gone is gone. What's happened has happened. And it's important to make the best of the players you have with you in the UE right now. Mm-hmm. Yep. And, uh, you know, Jean, you know, as, uh, as we speak right now, you know, Thailand is gearing up to play the UAE. So what's your expectation from this game? And uh, how do you think the result here will have an impact in the last game against Malaysia? I hate I hate predicting things because I always like curse the team. I don't want to do that. I don't want to predict anything. You got a few uh, few more hours to go before the game. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm not. I'm not going to predict anything. It's not. <laughs> but um, as for what will happen if we, you know, if we beat the UAE, which will be very difficult, but we need to do it. You know, if we don't win, I think we're out of the running for World Cup qualifying. Um, so we have to win, uh, and if we win, it will be a massive confidence boost. Uh, we, everything will still be to play for. A chance next round will still be, you know, an option, you know, to, to get through. Uh, so that will make the last game against Malaysia very significant. And, uh, and, and, as, it, a, and as a Malaysian fan, you know, we hope you guys beat the UAE today. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll avenge you. No worries, we'll, we'll avenge you. <laughs> but if, if Thailand, if Thailand don't win, they're effectively out of the running, right, for the World Cup qualifiers. But there's still the third place to fight for uh, against Malaysia to get into the the third round of the AFC Asian Cup qualifying to avoid the playoff. But I think even if Thailand come fourth, we've collected a lot of points off of other teams. I think we will come in the in the top ranked fourth place team for sure if we come fourth. That will be I'm pretty sure of that. But for Thailand it'll be a pride thing. You know, I think to come fourth in this group will be a big like wounded pride for Thailand when they a few years ago they were the best in Southeast Asia. And they they would reasonably think we can actually win this group. Uh, Thai Thai fans would, would have thought to come fourth in this group would be quite a big disappointment. So I think that no matter what happens, Thailand will really want to beat Malaysia just to make sure they can finish as high as possible in this group. And really, it, if we don't win today, it's going to be mostly for pride. But pride is important in in national, international football. So it'll be an important game. And uh, and you know. See, Stephen, you 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 did mention to me that uh, because of North Korea, the results against the last place team is not going to be counted. Is that is is that the case? Yeah, yeah. Basically, you know, um, since North Korea pulled out, mm. so for every team that finished second in the group, I think Jen can correct me on this. Every team that finished second in the group, their result against the team that finished the bottom, whoever finished the last, will not be counted. It will be sort of like forfeited. So it's just going to be the result between other teams in the group. So. At the moment right now, it's not really looking good for Malaysia. Even before the game against UAE, it was obvious that, you know, our two victories against uh, Indonesia, Indonesia yeah. is not going to be taken into consideration anymore. So we just had to win whatever games that we have to play. Obviously, you know, now, you know, the situation has changed a lot after the game against UAE. Uh, of course, you know, Thailand's draw with Indonesia sort of, you know, kept things open a little bit, but it's just made the road ahead a bit tougher for us. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, from from what I from what I understand, it's the y- your points against Indonesia in within the within the group, they still count as normal. But when you go to the rankings of the second place teams, the ranking of the fourth place team, yes, yes, uh, then they no longer count. So like Malaysia have nine points right now, but in the fourth place ranking, they only have three points because mm-hmm. six of those points were against Indonesia, mm-hmm. which is quite a quite a shame. But uh, on the other hand. I think someone pointed out that um, the other in, in the other groups, right? The last place team is fairly weak, so they get to get the other teams have big goal differences that they win by against the lowest place team. 
Mm-hmm. But in this group, Indonesia is a lot stronger than the other bottom place teams in the other groups. So we don't get the chance to get the big goal difference the other teams do. So by taking it out, we actually benefit a little bit because we don't have our goal difference suddenly becomes less bad compared to the other team's goal difference, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah. So, you know, obviously, if Thailand doesn't make it to the next round of the World Cup qualifier, do you think that this is uh, somewhat considering uh, taking a few notch down? Because, you know, considering how far Thailand football has progressed over the last 10 years and how well they did to some extent in the last World Cup qualifier for Russia 2018. I mean, what's your overall view on the progress that Thai football has made based on this current qualifier? Yeah, I think in some ways it's definitely true. Uh, if you look at it purely from the perspective of results, for sure, it looks like we've regressed a lot to make it to the next round of 2018 and not to the next round of 2022. That's quite a, you know, a big drop, I think. But I like to take a bigger a bigger view of it. Um, and if we look at the actual strength of the playing squad and the depth of the playing squad, I think the squad, the, the first 11, if, if we have Chanatip Kiraton Kirasnip, is stronger than it was four years ago. I think our squad is deeper than it was four years ago. And to be honest, I think that we've had a very tough group. You know, it's not the toughest group in the in the entire qualifying campaign, but it's certainly tougher than other groups that we could have had and we could have been in. And I think what goes hand in hand with that is Thailand's position in Southeast Asia, because in the past Thailand would look at a chance to play only ASEAN teams to get through and say, "Oh, we can do that." But now we're no we no longer dominate Southeast Asia, and for a lot of Thai fans, a lot of the very patriotic Thai fans, that that is a a sign of regression for them. But for me, I don't see it like that. I think that it's a good thing that Malaysia have gotten better. I think it's a good thing that Vietnam have gotten better. Indonesia look like they're going to be getting better in the next few years with the way things, you know, Chin Taeyong coming in and the squad he's picked. And I think if we have a stronger regional rivalry, stronger regional clubs, we'll all benefit on the Asian stage because now we have to all push ourselves to get better. And I think we'll, we'll all get better together. And I think that that's a really good thing that I want to see happen. So when Thai fans say, oh, we used to be the best in Southeast Asia, now we're not, therefore we've regressed. I don't, I don't believe that to be true. Certainly we've, we've stagnated. I think we've, we haven't grown as fast. We haven't grown as fast as Vietnam or Malaysia. That's for sure. But I, those, those other factors make a difference for me. You know, this group is harder. Southeast Asia's teams are better. Um, and, all the, and all these other things. I think I, I factor them in when I say, I don't think it's actually that big of a regression. A lot of fans don't agree with me. A lot of fans see it very clear cut and they say, okay, we haven't made it, therefore we've gone backwards. I, I personally don't see it like that, but I think most Thai fans you ask will see it like that. Okay, okay. Mm-hmm. And, you know, okay, World Cup qualifiers aside, you know, what, what should be the next realistic target for Thailand? 2023 Asian Cup, perhaps? Yeah, uh, I think we, we have the squad and the talent to make a big splash at the next Asian Cup in 2023. Mm-hmm. Uh, so getting through qualifying will be very important if we have to go to the next round of AFC qualifying. Uh, that'll be very important for that, to, to get through in a strong way to set ourselves up well to be in the tournament. Yeah. But I think before that, there's a lot of important tournaments coming up as well. So I think this year's Suzuki Cup will be very, very heated. I think Thailand is very eager to take back its place as the number one in Southeast Asia. I think that this will be more important than ever to Thai fans. But we have to we have to win, we have to prove that we're still the best because Vietnam has gained so much ground and it's scary. So I think that this will be a very, very significant uh, Suzuki Cup, possibly more heated than we've ever seen in, in, in recently. Uh, and I'd also encourage fans to follow the U23 team because they have a lot of stuff coming up that's really important. And those players will be very important to us in the future. Um, so the SEA Games later this year, And next year, there's the U23 AFC Asian Championships and also the Asian Games in 2022. So those are all very important uh, tournaments for that generation of players who will be coming up. But yeah, the 2023 Cup is, is quite an interesting tournament for us because we still have some of the best players from the previous generation will still be in their prime years. And at the same time, the younger players who, did, who got to the quarterfinals of the last under-23 Cup they will be coming through as well and being at a very good age to make a big impact in this cup. So I think it'll be one of our stronger squads that we've sent. So I think that something like the quarterfinals or something like that, if we can, if we can do that, it, it could be a very big, a big chance for us to introduce, you know, 
put our name strongly in the Asian stage. Mm, okay, I mean, we're looking, looking forward to that. Now, just to deviate a bit from the national team, um, as we were, we, we knew about this week that uh, following uh, Australia's pulling out from the AFC Champions League this year, Thailand will have four representatives in the group stage. So, you know, how far do you think that these teams can progress in the competition? And overall, you know, what, how, how, would, how would this benefit for Thai football, knowing that now you have four clubs, you know, compete, and as you just mentioned, you know, you're competing at the highest level in Asia and all that. What's your take on this? Yeah, it's, it's incredible. You know, I, I never thought I would, I would see a day when there are four Thai teams in the group stage. I mean, we have to remember, we're, there's only four teams because of other teams dropping out, right? So Jiangsu, Suning folded and allowed Ratsaburi to get through to the group stage. And then recently, the Australian clubs dropping out allowed Ching Rai to get in. Um, sorry. Uh, I think that it's very important for us to, to grow our coefficient lead over Australia and keep these spots that we have, which is two group stage and two qualifying. Um, and the fact that they've dropped and we've, we have a chance now to pick up a lot of points in the group stage if we do if the clubs do well. This could be a really big turning point for us. And I think in Thai football, it's been a very tough couple of years. You know, we've had problems in the domestic league uh, with COVID, with the TV rights deals, the national team not doing so well. It's been really frustrating. I think this is like this is the moment that Thai fans things can turn around. If suddenly Thai clubs do well in the in the Champions League, everybody can be optimistic again. Everybody can be excited again, and they can turn everything around. Um, as for how many teams get through, it depends on the strength of the groups, of course. Uh, I'll just go through the groups really quickly. I have them down here. So BG Patum, who are the champions, they have uh, Ulsan Hyundai, who are the defending AFC champions. They have Vietel FC from Vietnam. And the last team in the group will be either Shanghai SIPG or Kaya from the Philippines. Ratchaburi have JDT, of course, which would be quite a, quite a fun group to, to watch, I think. And also Pohang Steelers and Nagoya Grampus. Chiang Rai just got added to a new group because of the Australian teams dropping out. They have Jeonbuk, Hyundai Gamba Osaka, and Tampines Rovers. And then Port have Guangzhou Evergrande, Kichi, and Sereta Osaka. Reading those groups, I think Chiang Rai might actually have a chance of making it through. Even though on paper of the four Thai teams, they're probably the weakest squad right now. Um, they, have the they have experience from last year being in the group stage where they did pretty decently well. You know, they surprised me, I think, with, with the way they picked up points towards the end of that group, including the point against Melbourne, which is very impressive. Um, then they... Gamba Osaka are struggling in the J-League right now, so I think that it's quite possible that Ching Rai could come second to Jeonbuk in that group. As for BG and Port, it depends on whether or not the Chinese team send their strongest squads. Because I saw news that maybe Guangzhou Evergrande and Shanghai SIPG, if they get through, um, they won't send their strongest squads because if, if they do, then Ulsan and Shanghai are my favorites to get out of that group. And for Port, then it could be a problem with Guangzhou and Sereto Osaka. But if those teams are weakened by not sending their strongest squads, then there's a chance that all three of them could get out. I think Ratchaburi actually have the hardest group because JDT look very strong now and, and they're getting stronger every year. And I think JDT might have a chance of getting out of that group. And uh, Pohang and Nagoya, you know, Nagoya are having a great season in Japan. I think they're in the top three in the J-League right now. And Pohang had a great season last year. So they're not like giants in the same sense as uh, Jeonbuk or, or Guangzhou Evergrande, but they're, they're a very strong team. And I think that could be the most tight group and the toughest group. So I think, yeah, I don't think Rashaburi will get out. I think Chiang Rai have the best chance. And Port and BG's chance really depends on how seriously the Chinese clubs take the competition. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, definitely. We're looking forward to that group with JDT because uh, it's always interesting to watch Thai and Malaysian clubs competing at this level. Definitely. Yep. Yeah. Okay, okay Elwin, any, any particular last question? Uh, no, no, I'm fine. Just want to, yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks, Jan, for joining us, joining us on the show today. Uh, thank you for having me. It's always great to talk about football. Yep, yeah, yeah, thank, yeah, thank you for joining us. You know, I know it's a, it's a bit critical time for you because... Uh, for the benefit of our listeners, you know, we are currently recording right now, which is at 9.36 p.m. Malaysian time. Which is and about then, three hours before, before yes. Thailand kicks off against yeah. the <laughs> UAE. So, so why, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. why can I understand Jian's feeling, emotions going through right now as he's, he's eager to watch that game? 
And yeah, <laughs> knowing, the fact, knowing the fact that everything hangs in the balance in this game for everybody in the group. So yeah, yeah, yeah. not just for you guys, even for Malaysia. <laughs> for <the> Malaysia. <laughs> we, 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 yeah, we need so you. You you want us to? You want yeah, us to we want them. us. Yeah, you, yeah. You we, can beat us. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, and okay. no, no. The thing is, the thing is, you 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 got to beat them, and you got to beat them narrow. So 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 take it easy, go slow on the goals. <laughs> oh, then, I don't think we're gonna win then, heavily anyway. And no, then, I don't and think then, it's possible. And then we got to big, we got to beat you big time. So it's really a big ask. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now also for me, I'm I'm a big Indonesia fan now. I come on Indonesia, you know. Uh, come on, take, let's take points out Vietnam, take points out the UAE. Because this yeah. group is so fun. This group is so fun. Uh, and I, I remember, I remember when the draw happened. Everyone was like, "Oh, that's not a bad group." And I was like on the floor. I was like, "This is terrible. This is the worst group we could have got." And I felt it right away. Like we're not going to get. Like, this is such a tough group. Like if we got this another group where the last, the fourth. Part four and part five were weaker. We could have done. I think Malaysia might be the strongest team in part four, and Indonesia the strongest team in part five. And it's it, yeah, it's just such a such a tough group. It is. It is. It, so, I mean, even yeah. when the group, uh, when the draw was made, I felt that you know, for Southeast Asian teams, all four, all four of us had a very very good chance to do well in the group. I didn't expect mm. UAE to be. I mean, I expected them. In some ways, they could be the favorite to finish on top, but I didn't. But I kind of expected they will not have it easy, because the mm, level of football yeah. in Southeast Asia has somewhat improved. And you know, in in some ways, I kind of find that UAE, unlike in the previous World Cup qualifiers, have somewhat stagnated. You know, there hasn't been, they haven't improved so much from that previous campaign. Although they still have great players like Ali Makbub and all that. Yeah. yeah. So. But, it turns out to be, I think it's so, so far among all the World Cup qualifiers, this group has been the most interesting one, I would say. That. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I mean, I think they, they underestimated us, the UAE. I think they might underestimated us, Southeast Asia in general. Yeah, and I think yeah. it's quite sad because I think both Thailand and Vietnam could have made the last round with, if they were not in different groups. But now it looks like only one's going to make it. And that's mm. quite sad. We could have had more Southeast Asian teams in the next round, but yep. this is how it is. Yeah, it is. Uh, <laughs> it is what it is. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, Jan, thank you so much uh, for joining us. Yeah, taking your time to speak to us. Uh, we appreciate the insight as to what we can expect from Thai national team in the in the next two World Cup qualifiers. Uh, any last word from yourself? Uh no. Just thanks for thanks for having me on, and hopefully, you know, you guys get the results you want. It's not against us, and hopefully, <laughs> hopefully, Malaysian football keeps improving because the more the more you guys improve, the more we improve, the more everybody in Southeast Asia improves. And I think that instead of being rivals, we should you know be friends and improve together. And I think that's what the takeaway from this group has to be. Yeah, yeah. that'll be nice. That'll yeah. be nice. Totally yeah. agree on that. Yeah. Okay. All right, folks. With that said, this will bring us to an end of another episode of the Bola Bola Show. And stay safe, take care, and goodbye for now. Yeah.